All right, guys, it's late summer and the first whitetail seasons are gonna start opening around the country before you know it. And this is the time of the year that we start preparing and getting ready to make those first hunts. And trail cameras have become very popular. I use them, a lot of hunters use them all around the country. So I'm gonna kinda of share with you a little bit about how I use trail cameras specifically before the season starts to kinda of get prepared and have a strategy and a plan for opening day and those early season hunts. So as you can see, I have two different kinds of cameras. I have cellular cameras and standalone cameras. Cellular cameras have an obvious advantage. When you set them up, they deliver pictures to your phone. You can set them up one time and you don't have to go in and disturb that area again and you can still receive the information that you're trying to get from that area. Standalone cameras are typically a little bit easier to use, lower maintenance, but you do have to go in and change the camera card out periodically to get the picture. So you're not getting real-time daily data, you're getting data from days before when you put the camera out or the last time you changed the card. So I use them very differently, but they both have a very important uh, purpose to how I scout and how I get prepared for the season. So early season whitetail hunting is very different from mid season and later season when we start having less food, more rut activity, and the deer just, they're acting differently. So in the early season, I try to stay out of my hunting areas uh, during the summer. I wanna eliminate human pressure. So I don't oftentimes really know what deer I have and what they're doing until I start getting out there and using cameras and scouting. So a couple things I want to find out. What deer do I have? What groups are they staying in? And how and when are they moving? Because that's not going to be the same as it was when I was hunting back during the winter. So I'm going to use my cellular cameras in areas for travel purposes, maybe natural food sources where I don't know exactly when those sources are going to get hot and the deer are going to start using them. I'm gonna use those where I can go in one time, get them set up and just kind of watch it on a day-to-day -day basis. And I may not get very many pictures, but the few that I get hopefully will tell me what I'm trying to learn without me having to go in there and spend a lot of time. It's hot, I'm sweaty, and just really messing up and potentially changing the way the deer, deer are using that area before I ever even figure that out. Standalone cameras, I use in a lot of different ways. If I'm gonna put um, a, a food source on the ground, I'll use a standalone camera because I'm typically going to put that in an easy to access area and I know that the deer are eventually going to come there, they're going to stand there and eat, I'm going to get their picture, so I'm going to get an inventory of a lot of the deer in the area. If I put something on the ground over the course of a couple of weeks, I'm probably going to get most of the deer in that area are going to come by at some point and hopefully I'll get a picture. I'll kind of see what groups are traveling together and I'll get some idea about feeding times, when they're feeding and when they're coming, when they're going and how they're approaching and where they're coming from. I don't oftentimes put a standalone camera over a feed source because I'm gonna hunt over it. I'll put it in an area because I wanna see what's going on in that area and where the deer may be coming and going and how they're using that area. Very generally speaking, I wanna put my cell cams out and I don't wanna touch them again until I'm ready to go hunt. With my standalone cameras, I put them out in a lot of different ways. I may just put one out for a week in a spot just to see if there's any deer using this trail. I use them a lot of different ways. So a couple of tips for how to get the best results from your cameras in any situation. So I don't run cameras all year. I put them out as I'm getting ready uh, to start scouting and getting ready for the season and throughout the season. So I'm always gonna take my cameras, I bring them out of the woods, I put them inside, I clean them up, I take the batteries out, take the SD cards out, just take care of them like you would any electronic equipment. When I get ready to use them again, I'm gonna put formatted SD cards and I'm gonna make sure I'm using the right class card for the camera that I have and new fresh batteries. And I'm gonna test them out before I go out in the woods with them. There's nothing worse than finding a spot you wanna put a camera, you're expecting some results out of that and you find out a couple of days later the camera's not working and you gotta go back in and just disturb the place more and all that. I, I want to get in quickly, get my camera set up and get out and let it, let it do its work. Um, these are, are adapter hang there's a lots of different kinds of these they're they're adapters they screw into the tree and you can swivel them and really position your your camera in a lot of different ways it's obviously valuable for an area like a fence post in the open or an area where you got a lot of little small trees and you don't have a great uh, a great spot to just set a camera up on the tree but also when you're when you're putting cameras on trails 
a lot of times I want to put my camera up higher than the deer's eye level. I get a lot of pictures of deer on a trail looking right at the camera. And even though we have no glows and, and we have these silent uh, shutters, deer, deer, they live there. They travel all the time and all of a sudden one day something's not right or they, they hear just the smallest thing or get the smallest glimpse, deer staring right at that camera. You can use things like this to get uh, those cameras up higher. And never face your cameras east or west. Sunrise, sunset, you're gonna end up getting a, a whited out picture of sun, sun glare. You wanna face north or south so that you get the best quality lighting from your camera. And if you're on a trail, you wanna look down the trail so you get the most exposure to the animal moving to and from the camera, not just passing by in front of it. And then you get just one, you don't get the trailing deer, or you might only just get half the deer as it enters or exits the frame. Those are a couple of things. One other thing, don't put your cameras in really tight areas where there's lots of movement around them because you'll end up getting a bunch of pictures of nothing. So cameras can be a very valuable tool. They can help you do a lot of things and make you a better hunter. The one thing that I would say above all is don't become a slave to your camera. Don't start hunting based just off your camera. Your camera's only seeing a small percentage of what's going on around where it's at. And you, you can end up becoming overly anxious about what you're seeing and making stupid rush decisions or you can become apathetic and and not hunting because your camera's not taking a picture well it, it's, it's only telling you a small part of what's going on but if you use them correctly they can help you and i always like to hunt with a plan i don't like to hunt randomly and the cameras help me develop a plan to at least have an idea of what i'm going in to do and um, they've helped me out a lot over the years so I hope you learned something. I hope you gained something from it. Get some cameras, get them out there. If nothing else, it's just really exciting to get pictures of deer and see what's out there where you're hunting.